a closer look at injuries most common to our children during this time of the spring and some tips on ways to protect them. Someone who knows all too well is Dr. Michael Bryant with the, the urgency room, the things that you see in the urgency room, especially at this time of the year, are just amazing. Yeah. So maybe we can start off with, uh, to me, I think a springtime, I think the kids get out, they get on their bikes and things like that. What type of injuries um, do they see? You've got a helmet here yeah. to talk about one production and stuff. So what are some of the things that you see in the urgency so room? So we kind of have five or six big types of injuries, but most of them are related to falls, falls from something. So we can talk about playgrounds, bicycles, skateboards. Um, my kids right now are lobbying for a trampoline. Uh, we see <laughs> my a lot kids of did too. I was so glad they finally got over that phase and we never got a trampoline. And sure enough, one of her friends had a broken leg and someone else had a sprain and it's like yeah. just dangerous. Yeah, and we've, we're Minnesotans. We've kind of been cooked up all winter and now we've got good weather. We're excited to get out there and start enjoying it. Um, injuries uh, are really common, uh, specific, specifically like bicycle or skateboard injuries. About 90,000 plus injuries come to the emergency Incredible. department or urgent cares or places like the urgency room. Um, our primary focus for bicycle accidents is really preventing head injuries, um, and helmets are the key. Um, it's really nice that we've kind of gone through a transition from when we were children where no one wore a helmet, mm -hmm. and when you wore a helmet it was because you might have had some sort of medical disorder, to now where it's, it's pretty commonplace. and. And most of the time in our neighborhoods that, uh, where, where I live, the kids are wearing a helmet and it's no longer uncool. And I know. I, it seemed like my son, was he'd wear it when he was younger, but then trying to get him to wear it when he was older, it was like it was difficult. Yeah, I mean, and they, they can save your life. I, I'm also an avid cyclist and um, unfortunately had a crash and my helmet cracked, but my wow. skull didn't. And I think without that, I might not be caring for patients or being the father or husband I would like to be. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's important that not only have a helmet, but a properly fitting hel helmet, right? That's right. You want it to make sure that it's not tilted too far forward or too far back. You want it to cover the important parts. And one thing that people don't know is that once you've crashed in a helmet, you should get a new helmet. It's sort of the warranty is over at that point. And because um, there will be subtle cracks in the structure that might uh, not protect you from a, a subsequent fall. And what about skateboards? That's another um, skateboards. Lots of injuries. There is a lot, there are a lot of injuries, and uh, we see a good number of patients uh, for that. Uh, the main thing again is helmets. Um, th there's cool helmets for skateboarding, <laughs> you know, are. and um, for for people who use ramps or uh, trick parks, they've even have cool versions of knee pads and elbow pads. It looks like uh, jeans or a sweatshirt, and they're sort of embedded within their clothing, and uh, they really do prevent a lot of well, the simple injuries, but also the more severe ones, you know, cups, cuts, scrapes, abrasions, things like that are going to prevent that pretty much universally. And then a lot of times prevent a fracture that would have happened. Well, what about like loose clothing too? I would think you have to be careful of that Absolutely. As well. You want to, you want to, I mean, that's why a lot of cyclists wear spandex because you're not catching things uh, on, especially like mountain biking, you're in the woods or in skateboarding on the ramp. Loose clothing is going to catch you and take your balance off and cause you to fall. And we're thinking about children riding their bikes. If they have a super baggy sweatshirt or something sticking off it, it's going to catch on their handlebars and they're learning. It's going to sort of up the ante on their degree of difficulty and they, they go down. Yeah, and playgrounds too. I mean, kids love playgrounds. And right, so I'm thinking about playgrounds and um, my brother just built one in his backyard and you talk about the different surfaces that children can fall on and concrete or asphalt kind of being the worst. And so if you're looking at doing sort of your spring project and you have a playground, consider putting down a couple of, a couple of inches of bark or mulch. The, it reduces the force from which someone would hit the ground exponentially compared to concrete and uh, turning a broken arm into a scrape. So that's really good. Yeah, I've noticed too, it seems like all the, the newer playgrounds too, that the padding, it's not just the metal now on the, on the slides and things like that. Yeah, so. absolutely. And then they're using uh, sort of recycled tires and things like that to really make a shock absorbent area. Uh, one thing that parents want to do is they want to enjoy the, the playground with their children, but if that's a recipe for disaster. If you put a 200 pound adult with a 20 pound child and you go down a slide and come to the bottom, it's not the 20 pound child's force going on their leg, it's your 200 pounds. And we do see, unfortunately, some injuries related to that. Yeah, I mean, our, we took our grandson, he's what, two, and, and we're right there. And he also kind of bumped his head a little bit. And thank goodness there's that padding, and we were right there. And so 
Yeah, so you said bumped ahead. ahead. So that comes up a lot in the spring. When do when do I need to take my child? That was my question. Shouldn't we go to the emergency room? And yeah, the emergency department or the urgency yeah. room where we see head injuries all the time. I was vetoed. I, they said, no, he's fine. He's, he's okay. And I go, are you sure? Yeah. And it's, it's really tricky to determine the difference between a head bump and a concussion. And really, it's um, you don't even have to hit your head. It's a deceleration of the brain inside the skull that has us worried about concussion. And it's, a, it's sort of that persistent headache. And it might not just be headache. It could be fatigue, confusion, nausea. And we've moved, we've moved the continuum down to assume that everything's a head injury until we can sort of prove it's not. So, so it's always a good idea to bring them in. Yeah, so if, if your child has a head bump and t they jump back up and they're playing normally, fine. They're dazed, that's a different story. Uh, they, they're not quite themselves. That's something we should talk about. And as hard as it may be, those are times where the best treatment actually is just to sort of restrict your child's activity and give the brain time to recover. But these are things you want to talk to your doctor about or doctors uh, like the emergency providers at the urgency room where we can, we can take a look at you or your child, look at the story, talk about the mechanism, how far did you fall, how they've been acting, and determine would you need imaging, would, meaning CAT scans or x-rays or things like this, or mm -hmm. can we just watch and treat and uh, manage conservatively? You know, the, everyone's bringing the lawnmowers out now, and I don't think we think of that it, usually in in terms of injuries for children, but it, that can also pose a risk, people out with the lawnmowers. It, it, um, it is not taken as seriously as it, it should be. If you think about the physics of it, it's spinning a bl metal blade, spinning at hundreds of miles per hour. And so we think about, well, if I just stay clear of the mower blade. And thankfully, the most majority of mowers being produced right now have an automatic stop. If we let go, the engine stops. I think there's some common sense things. Children under 12 shouldn't be operating a mower, no matter how bad mom or dad don't, don't want to mow the grass. Mm -hmm. There's some safety things. We, we recommend that you wear full-toed shoes, full covers. And I, I actually recommend socks up to the knees because uh, it's a projectile. It's like a slingshot. It picks up a rock or a piece of dirt or a fence. It, it's going to hurt when mm -hmm. it hits somebody. Some people might think I'm going overboard, but I actually make my kids wear protective eyewear because I don't oh. know what's going to ricochet what about up. the ears, too? Yeah, for, for riding lawnmowers or things like that, there is that sound thing, and we, we have earmuffs uh, for when the kids uh, mow over at Grandpa's house on the, on the rider. But we had to make them wait till they were over 12 because we just it's like operating a car. You want to make sure they know what to do and that they're not going to panic. And there's just a lot of injuries that happen. Lost fingers, lost toes, and not lost, injured, cut off. And th those are things that are really hard as a emergency provider or even a surgeon to, to remedy. So all great advice, final advice for our viewers on keeping our kids safe, not only this spring, but the summer and going into the fall too. Well, be proactive. Talk to your kids about safety things. You know, look both ways before you cross your street still works. You know, um, set up some, some safety measures. Encourage your kids to wear helmets and do so by wearing a helmet when you ride your bike too. One thing that I wanted to touch on was pool safety. Uh, swimming, this, we're just opening all our pools and mm -hmm. things like that, is that want to encourage people to get swimming lessons and to make it comfortable to have life vests around. If kids come to your house or you send your child to someone else's house, make it cool to wear a life vest if they're uns uncertain. And as a homeowner, as a parent, you have to be an active participant in, pool, participant in pool parties. You have to watch. If you're not watching, no one's watching. So as people look forward to getting more active this spring, I just say uh, enjoy it. Um, if you do get injured, uh, you can come to the urgency room. We have full imaging capabilities as far as CAT scan, MRI, I'm sorry, CAT scan, ultrasound, fluoroscopy. We, we can take care of fractures from diagnosing them to setting them and giving good referrals. So uh, we like spring. It's good for business, but it's really good for our community to get out and be active. All right. Well, Dr. Michael Bryant, thank you for being with us with the urgency room. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you.